Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Designed Move. Today's topic is going to cover sciatica and lower back pain. Sciatica is one of the most common yet misunderstood types of pain. As many as 40% of people will get it during their lifetime and it becomes even more frequent as you age. That's why today we're going to review what sciatic pain is, the structures of the body that it involves, how the issue is usually diagnosed, what are the potential causes and risk factors, and how to distinguish it from other types of low back pain and leg pain. At the end, we're going to take you through suggested series of exercises that you can complete and offer postural recommendations to help prevent sciatic pain and restore your body. You'll notice the table of contents defines the timestamps of each of the areas covered in today's video, so if you'd like to skip ahead to any of the segments, you sure can. If you have any questions on today's topic, please reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Let's go ahead and get started. So, what is sciatic pain? Sciatica refers broadly to pain that radiates down the path of the sciatic nerve. The traditional course of this pain begins in the low back and radiates down to the buttocks, down the back of the thigh, and into the back and outside of the calf, and sometimes even into the foot and toes. Some individuals also describe paresthesia or numbness and tingling in the same pattern. The pain can vary as sharp and stabbing to dull and aching, and generally presents only on one side rather than on both legs. The sciatic nerve is the largest nerve in the body. It's derived from the nerve roots of the lower lumbar and sacral region of the spine. After forming from the nerve roots, it travels underneath or through in about 20% of the population the piriformis muscle, which is down the back of the thigh before it branches out to back of the knee and into separate nerves, which then travel down into the lower leg into the foot. Due to its large size and many branches, it provides muscle and sensory function to many of the muscles in the lower extremity. Sciatica is diagnosed through a patient's subjective description of their symptoms along with a physical examination. In general, sciatica is diagnosed when a patient describes unilateral or one-sided leg pain radiating down the leg and into the foot and toes, along with additional signs of increased nerve tension. The most common nerve tension test performed is a passive straight leg raise where a physician will raise the patient's leg up, keeping the knee straight. If pain is related to sciatic nerve tension, the patient will experience a reproduction of their symptoms at about 35 to 70 degrees of leg flexion. Pain will sometimes be increased if the patient pulls their toes upward towards their shin. The main cause of sciatica is as a result of a herniated disc in the lumbar region of the spine. The other causes include spinal stenosis or narrowing of the canal where the nerve root travels. Another common cause of sciatica is a compression of the sciatic nerve by the piriformis muscle, otherwise known as piriformis syndrome. Some of the common risk factors for developing these conditions include being between the age of 45 and 65, being tall, smoking, increased mental stress, occupational risk factors like regular bending, lifting, twisting, or sitting in a vibrating environment like driving. So how is sciatica different from other types of lower back pain or leg pain? Well, low back pain can present in many different ways and as the result of many different conditions. In general, sciatica is considered as a diagnosis when the individual reports one-sided leg pain greater than the lower back pain and the pain radiates into the foot or toes with numbness and tingling in the same pattern. The straight leg raise test would also induce the same pain. In the absence of these symptoms or any other red flags, a diagnosis of nonspecific low back pain would be considered. Now that we know a little bit more about sciatica, we can take advantage of a few simple mobility and strength exercises that can help you to prevent it and to keep your body moving at its best. First, we'll show you how to release the muscles that are traditionally short and restrictive on the pelvis in the leg mechanics, in this case the piriformis and hamstrings. Then we'll want to increase the strength of the deficient muscle groups around the hips, the gluteals. Once a more natural base position is established for the pelvis, we'll integrate the core musculature to reinforce the proper support of the lower back and the hips. Remember, this doesn't substitute medical guidance, but is a suggested intervention associated with the issue. 
Make sure to reach out to a qualified health professional if you are experiencing symptoms. The demonstration of a static to active release for the piriformis muscle. First, start off by defining the structures that the piriformis attaches to. The muscle originates on the sacrum, the lowest portion of the spine, and crosses horizontally to the greater trochanter of the femur, just on the lateral side of the hip under the pelvis. The piriformis lies deep to the glute max. From a seated position, place your fluid foam core ball under the right glute with your upper body either braced on your palms or elbows. You'll want to ensure that your back maintains a neutral spinal alignment, so try your best to keep it straight. By crossing the right leg over the left, you'll lengthen the glute so that the ball can press through it and brace into the piriformis muscle. You'll want to make sure that the left hip is stable by flexing the oblique and glute on that side. Roll up and down until you feel a sensitive spot on the ball. This is usually the piriformis. To ensure that you're on it, rotate the femur internally towards the middle of the body so that the muscle stretches taut. You'll feel the tension on the ball. Once you've defined that you're on the right muscle, press into it with more body weight by pressing your weight into your left foot. Once the muscle guards or flexes back, ease off the pressure and slowly add consistent pressure into it until it relaxes. From there, stretch the muscle under the pressure of the ball by pulling the leg into flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. Only stretch the muscle to the first barrier of resistance. There should be no pain and the hip shouldn't rotate inwards on the right. Hold the stretch for six to eight seconds, then pull it again through until a second barrier is found. Again, make sure that there is no pain felt. Relax the muscle and repeat the steps two to three times before moving on to the other side of the body. This is a demonstration of a static to active release for the lateral hamstring. From a seated position, define the attachment points for the right lateral hamstring, known as the bicep femoris. This muscle resides under the posterior compartment of the thigh and consists of two heads, long and short. The long head originates on the pelvis at the ischial tuberosity under the glute and attaches the fibula on the front of the lower leg. If you reach under the outer lateral portion of the thigh, bending the knee, you'll be able to feel the tendon attachment point. Trace this upwards towards the hip until you come to the belly of the muscle. Place your lacrosse ball there and compress the muscle between the femur and the ball. Keep your posture upright by making your lower back stay erect on the left side. Try to keep your left glute and external oblique engaged through the whole process. Press into the ball with enough force to trigger a bracing from the hamstring, then ease off the pressure until it no longer guards. Slowly increase the pressure at a rate that keeps it from guarding or flexing. After 30 to 60 seconds, begin to stretch the muscle under the pressure of the ball by extending the knee. Only stretch to the first barrier for resistance. Hold the pressure there for 6 to 8 seconds, then stretch the muscle to the second barrier for resistance. Let go of the knee extension and repeat the steps 2 to 3 times before moving on to the other side. This is a demonstration of a side-lying hip extension with abduction. This exercise will target the gluteals with a focus on the glute medius, a powerful lateral hip stabilizer. Start off by lying on the right side of your body. Make sure that your spine is centered, including your neck and head. Support the head by pressing your head backwards into the right palm. Make sure to keep your right and left hip bones stacked on each other. Tuck your right leg into flexion, making note that you don't rotate the left hip backwards. Straighten the left leg, making sure that the knee is fully extended and that the ankle is parallel to the floor with the toes pulled inwards towards the shin. Before lifting the leg upwards towards the ceiling, make sure to brace the rib cage by contracting your external oblique on the left and pre-contract your glute on the left side as well. Once the hip is braced, lift the left leg upwards and backwards, making sure that no accessory motion occurs from either the hip or the lower back. Bring the leg up for two seconds, then slowly back towards the floor for four seconds. Complete 20 repetitions. You'll want to complete two sets of 20 repetitions, giving yourself a minute between sets before moving on to the opposite side. This is a demonstration of an elevated isometric hip press with spinal flexion and extension. This is a multi-joint integration exercise that focuses on the stability of the hips using the gluteals while improving control of the lumbar stabilizers, the abdominals, and the spinal erectors. The exercise is meant to teach the coordination between both sets of muscles and the breathing mechanics that accompany them. Begin the movement by lying on your back with your knees and hips elevated and bent at 90 degrees. We are demonstrating the exercise on a BOSU, but you can use a wall to start off. Make sure to tuck your chin and retract your shoulder blades and brace through your abdominals and gluteals before pressing your hips upwards. Hold the hips in a fixed position, focusing on keeping your glutes and abdominals contracted. As you breathe in through your nose, slowly allow the front of your hips to drop downwards allowing your back to extend slightly 
while controlling this low stretch of your abdominal wall for a count of two. Make sure that you don't lose the contraction of your glutes. At the bottom of the hip tilt, breathe outwards through your mouth for a count of six, trying to get all the air from your lungs. This should rotate your hips upwards, allowing your back to slightly flex, increasing the contraction of your abdominals. Make sure to control the active stretch of your lower back muscles, and once again, keep the glutes engaged. Try to keep both your right and left hips parallel to each other the entire time. Complete 10 to 15 series of flexion extension with the coordinated breathing before recovering for one minute and complete two sets. If you work in an office setting, chances are you spend the majority of your day sitting in a chair that doesn't provide the best support for your back. As a result, your hips can rotate backwards and reduce the natural curvature of the lumbar spine. This resembles a more pronounced C curve of the spine, reducing the more natural S curve. Adding lumbar support to your chair can provide your back with the support you need to maintain neutral posture, promote proper circulation, and prevent muscle imbalances associated with sciatica. Remember, just as important as the exercises that support neutral posture are, reinforcing the work you've done with lumbar arch support during your workday can really help to reinforce the right position so that you can maintain the natural S curvature of your spine and reduce the chances of that sciatic pain. Thank you again for joining us for another episode. If you have any questions on today's topics or if you would like to schedule an appointment for a complimentary movement assessment, reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com or check out fluidhealthandfitness.com. As always, your body is designed to move, so stay in motion and we'll see you soon.